Calabash Gardens is a saffron farm in Wells River, Vermont, that is meant to create community, grow generational wealth, and regenerate the land. Owned by women and black folks, it is intrinsically linked to environmental, racial, and social justice. I was uh, thinking of Renat Calabash, which is a tree, which is a sacred tree of, uh, in uh, Haitian culture. Uh, that's where uh, stories are told by elders to children and, and that create a sense of community. I think it's quite important for me personally because I, I think like uh, I love calabash trees and I'm just, just sitting under them listening to my grandpa telling stories at night and everybody's sitting in circle and it's the same trees when there's voodoo ceremonies that will bring the spirits food um, I think there's quite some magic in this imagery to me The idea for Calabash Gardens is that it's it's a farm um, that we can create uh, personal, communal, and environmental wealth through. So, yes, we are actively trying to you know uphold that tradition of the Calabash Gourd in its sacred ways of of having um, you know a connection to the earth, but also having a connection to community and also the ancestors past, present, and future. So this is a way for us to be able to create a space where folks of all walks of life can, can come together and, and um, create community within this space, but also be safe from, from a world that maybe doesn't necessarily want them to be safe. So our focus here is on regenerative agriculture. So our goal here is to, you know, create um, a space where where the planet can heal, where humans can heal, and where we can all come together in a way that is um, productive and um, kind of spiritually inclined and community building. The people that's going to be walking in the field, I would have love so that they they. Mm, equities in, in that space because there's no way they would ever uh, have a chance to build, to even invest in anything. If a farm, farm worker would be having invest in places because the way they're going to, they treated them anyway in the first place and even thinking the idea of owning that place that treat you uh, like, uh, like a commodity uh, that is one of the biggest centers of the sanctity mm -hmm. because those people are my brothers and sisters and, mm -hmm. and, and I care about them. We came to, to the conclusion of Safran because, uh, uh, because we were flirting with different ideas of different things that we, were, that, that we could do. I we were looking for something that is different and then something that could create Generation, mm -hmm. generational, generational wealth. Yeah. Uh, 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 for me, that was the center of it, of my thought, thinking process. That if we do that right, if we could figure this out, uh, uh, not only that uh, we, we would give them a possibility to see, uh, to, to be working in the form differently, uh, uh, to be treated differently, uh, uh, and then also to be. Um, Part of your boss is, is someone like you that speaks your language, that, that, that understands what you went through uh, or, or what you're going through. In, in that process, not only that it brings confidence and then it brings like uh, uh, the way you move in the world differently because uh, when you when you uh, treat it especially in your workplace like that while you're putting a lot of your soul in some endeavors 
and people treated you. I knew I, I used to hear when my sister came back from work after spending 10 hours standing and working for less than six bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And then she, she it breaks my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is part of my, that's why for me it is important because I have my blood in it. I have people that I care about. And, and in that process, not only that the grandchildren, if we could make this work, in the right way and then they invest in that process or while they put their own blood in building that and their grandchildren will not have to take that the same denigrating jobs because they have a base and and that they can that they can invest in their education and 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 and, and, and a sense of place i was a little bit reluctant to farming because i know how hard it is I was born, my, my entire fam families are farmers. My dad used to go into the Dominican Republic working in sugar plant plantation like slave mm -hmm. and, and so that he can send me to school. And I was the only one that in my family that went to school and went to college. And, and those were, I think, uh, the saffron spiked my, my um, interest. Because saffron is such an intense specialty crop, mm -hmm. we will never be able to get away from like doing things like plowing and rototilling and um, and discarrowing. But what we can do is we can then cover crop over that, and we can put the fallow fields where we are rotating the saffron out of for several years, um, the chance to really rebuild itself with holistic plant grazing. Um, so that we don't actually have to keep augmenting the soil in ways that are very unsustainable. So we planted 2,000 corms in 2018, um, and that was our first saffron experience, um, like this, like real experience like this. And um, uh, we got it had a 96% return that year, uh, which we were thrilled about. It was probably some of the best statistics in um, the whole country for, for first year returns. So we waited for our second year. Uh, we had a great return last year on that test plot. We, we I think, tripled, um, tripled our return on the test plot. And um, with two successful winters underneath our belt, we um, made the decision to go ahead and, and plant the, the large plot. Um, so our, we originally were gonna plant a full acre um, and then COVID happened. So next year will be, you know, will be really intense because we actually do have to plant the other half of the acre. So 50% of our startup costs were going, were going to be coming from bank loans. Mm -hmm. And the other 50% of our startup costs were going to be coming from um, investments from friends and family. Also, the amount of investors has a certain percentage of black folks in it. That's imperative. It can be the same way. It's all mm -hmm. owned by white folks. Again. Right. The reparations are going out to... to to black folks and descendants of enslaved people that you know there absolutely has to be also some kind of reparations that go out to indigenous people as well i think it's something we should explore and think deeper about mm. does it make sense <laughs>
Me da 